Hello, 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 hello. Wow. Things are going to be interesting tonight. You know, I didn't even get to change my picture. Uh, for the uh, intro here. Well, off to a good start. What's up, guys? Yogizilla here. And uh, I am really tired. So this, this might be a short show and... Uh, no one else seems to be here. Uh, War child, war daddy, whatever he's going by these days. Uh, he's medicated. And uh, I guess he went to the dentist, so that's always fun. And uh, I have started a very, uh, if you haven't been keeping up, I've started a very involved gig. I love it. But man, am I spent. I think I'm starting to get to that age where it's too much activity, it's just too much. I don't know, that makes no sense. So it's April 20th, and it's uh, episode 175 of Horseplay Live. We're running late, we'll just do a little bit of a uh, pre show here. And uh, I just realized I don't have my mic monitoring on, so I'm used to hearing myself. And I don't right now. I'm going to assume that it sounds good. And if not, well, there'll be some uh, post-production work here. So one of the fun things that happened before I started the show is... Uh, I think my uh, mother, my onboard sound card just died. So I might have to get uh, another sound card. So that's fun. Uh, I, you know what, I've been meaning to get another sound card, so... It makes sense, because this, the one that's built in was starting to get some EMI issues. You know, if you don't know what EMI is, basically just white noise, electronic, electromagnetic uh, interference. Um, so I'm going to shoot for an hour long show, maybe an hour and a half. Uh, and we probably won't get to the Unico Poopies again. Yeah. Let me cover a little bit of news. What's been going on? And, uh. Yeah. Who is that? Oh, hi, kitty. I have a kitty that's uh, clawing at my chair. Do I care? Not really. What am I doing? Just had a total brain fart. Um, and Stan's calling me. My friends are terrible. I love him to death, but uh, they uh, they don't. They always forget that I'm doing a podcast. I've been doing it for a long time. You think? You would think, but everybody's kind of caught up in their own thing. I get it. I get it. I ain't mad. All right. What are we doing? This will be the background pictures. I think it's fitting. There we go. I mean, I like uh, the way Olivia Dudley Newton, I think is her name, from Magician. I like the way she looks. But it's not just about pretty face. It's about letting you know what, what to expect, what's ahead. I'm really tired. <laughs> really, really tired. I don't know if I mentioned that. All right, so we got that. Well, I guess without further delay, let's start the show, and uh, hopefully I won't completely derp. <laughs> See you guys in a bit. You are listening to an All Games Radio Network broadcast of allgames.com. Hi. 
Hi, this is Normie from Knuckleballer Radio and Zombie Cast, and you're listening to one of my favorite shows on the Geeky Antics Network. Don't forget to check out the rest of the gang over at geekyantics.net. Warning, there might be rants and food ahead and possibly inappropriate behavior. Don't tell anybody, though. Welcome, geeks, gamers, furries, and ninja robots. This is Horseplay Live. Today's Thursday, April 20th, 420. That's right. And this is episode 175, which is appropriately titled, It's 420, and all I got was this lousy herpes. That's not a personal story, I swear. But that's the best thing to come up with. <laughs> Usually I try to get the uh, show notes at least prepped uh, a week in advance, you know, right after we finished the previous show. And then I kind of organically update it with the feedback from the team and from the community. But that didn't happen this week. I'm your bald bear lizard host, guys. My name is Yogi Zilla. If you don't know me, friends call me Yogi. I hope we can be friends. And uh, we have not assembled a motley crew for you tonight. So uh, what's going to happen is going to be flying solo with Yogi. It's going to and It's going to probably be a short show. It's not going to be our usual show. I'm going to spitball a little bit. It's going to be a lot of IRL stuff, a little bit of news, and that's probably it. We usually go uh, two hours long, and we uh, we cover all facets of geek culture, particularly video games, we do technology. We talk, kind of talk about the stuff that's uh, part of the zeitgeist in the geek community, in the geekosphere, if you prefer. I'm a little congested, by the way, too, so I may, not, uh, I may sound a little weird. Uh, you know, uh, when you change your schedule drastically, even if you try to prep for it, it still shocks your body. And I'm at that old age where every I'm just fussy as heck. But we're gonna get to that. We're gonna get to that. Uh, I do want to do a little housekeeping. This show is live every Thursday night at 11 p.m. Eastern. We might be starting a little bit earlier, so we're gonna say 11 ish. All right, we'll say ish. We might start a little earlier, you know, start a pre-show, maybe even at 10, and start the show around 10.30 or 10.45, you know, or something like that. Um, well, pre-show's usually about 10, 15 minutes, so I try to go for it, uh, warm up the crowd, let, get everybody to settle in and all that good stuff. Oh, you know what? And I don't have the chat up, so if you guys are saying something, I am missing it. I am not on point tonight. But yeah, we're every Thursday at 11 p.m.-ish. Eastern ish <laughs> ish 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 I like that. I like ish ish is real uh, and that's 8 p.m. on the west coast which is not the best coast which is not nah, west coast is cool and 4 a.m. GMT and early in the day over at our unofficial system network all games radio network all games dot com we have the horseplay rerun which I like to call horseplay replay this is horseplay live it's a live show and that's Horseplay Replay. So where do we do it live? We do the show live at twitch.tv forward slash geeky antics. Twitch.tv forward slash geeky antics. For those of you that are not really into the gaming scene, you are wondering, well, what's Twitch? Well, Twitch is basically what you stream or uh, Justin TV used to be. Um, oh, and then I see Chris in the chat gaming from the Gaming Death Podcast. All right, so we got one person with us. Uh, he's going to walk the dog. Oh, when did, he, when did he get a dog? I don't remember that. All right, so he might be joining us tonight. My ear is itching. You know, when you get congested, your ear starts itching. No boy, no. I might be looking side to side a lot, making sure, monitoring the sound levels and stuff. Let's say I'm coming in good. I'm not coming in hot. I had to kind of change the setup on the fly. Oh, 
Oh, it stands here too. There we go. I said I didn't have the chat up. Someone's multitasking clearly. <laughs> so, usually at this point we have introductions for show hosts, but we don't have any other hosts. And then we go into IRL and we ask everybody how's their week been and we share anecdotes and I usually go into long tangents. But tonight it's going to be me just rattling on. So first off, I want to invite you to join us over geekyn6.net for slash Discord. That's going to be even more important, uh, our Discord server. That's uh, geekyantics.net for slash Discord. And Discord is... Oh, I didn't even talk about what Twitch is. Yeah, I, did say, I did say it's like you stream and, and uh, yeah, I did say that. So it's a video streaming platform. There you go. Uh, seems to be more geared toward the younger folks. So for uh, us old folks, it's not as happening of a place. But, uh, yeah, that's what Twitch is. And Discord is a chat server. We do we do voice chat on there, but mainly we just do text chat. And uh, we have different categories on there. And just like the show, it's NSFW. We have one area that's NSFW. That's where we put the inappropriate stuff and the more risque stuff. And then we try to keep it pretty chill in the other areas. Uh, you know, not so much in terms of the language, but, you know, uh, the the content if you know what I'm saying. I did shave. Kinda it's getting hotter, so I figured I'd trim it and then, you know, start off my first official week at the new gig, uh looking a little more professional. I even did a little thing where I took off the mustache. I just have the chin strap beard kinda going on. Although it's not really a complete chin strap, I kinda have a neck beard thing going on. I like a little bit of fluff under here. I don't like it too thin. It's kinda pretty boyish. I mean it looks nice. It's it's a uh, high and tight, so to speak. Oh yeah, a little, little some some. I like to. I don't have hair up top, so I keep the, the hair on the bottom more sculpted. But that sounds really wrong. I, just, I I already committed to it though. So yeah, make sure you join us over in Discord. It's a good place to keep up with us. You know, when we're not doing game nights or podcasts, which is the main thing we do these days. I'm gonna complete with Mr. Clean. Yeah. I didn't need to touch it up. I get a lot of growth, a lot of peach fuzz. Rather quickly. <laughs> Strut it. <laughs> I am strutting it. I'm shining in the head. Eee, look at this. I can see I have a do I do have a lot of shine up there. Um So let's talk about this past week. So this I uh, you know I'm I'm starting to scale back to TV watching. And I haven't had much chance to play video games because I got a lot of things going on. I'm trying to get all my affairs in order, wrap up some projects that could be more focused on uh, on my new gig, and uh, you know, life, life stuff, adulting, um, catching up with old friends too. It's important to build up relationships. I'm making more space for the things that I think really matter at this juncture in my life. <clears throat> some big changes coming. I just. In my life before the Geeky Answer Network, uh, the gang. I'm excited about it. I'm very excited about it. I probably don't sound it because I'm exhaust, exhausted and congested. But uh, I think I'm all caught up on the magicians. I caught back up with Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. And they're doing this whole alternate reality type thing. And that's all I'm going to say. Pretty interesting. That's always a fun show. I know it's to the quiet taste. You either love it or you don't. But uh, I'm a big Marvel guy, so anything Marvel, I'm pretty much in. Um, now, Into the Bad Lines, I might be an episode or two behind. Same thing with The Expanse. I Zombie, I'm caught up on. And that's uh, I Zombie, I, li I like to always kind of put a little sidebar there. I Zombie's kind of like Veronica Mars with zombies. It really has that kind of vibe going on. So. That's a, that's a good show. I highly recommend. Uh, also, been watching Prison Break Season 5 here and there. Um, and yes, I know there's probably someone in the background because boundaries. <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing a live show, and of course, I can't wait. Be right back, guys.
<laughs> I just read the chat. Stan. All right, I'm back. So for the podcast listeners and audio feed. Yeah, she's a hand. She she talks with her hands a lot. She's a hand talker. So yeah, for you on the on the audio feed, uh, you probably won't notice different. I truncate silence. My better half had to talk to me. It couldn't wait because I guess she's heading to bed soon. Uh, it's always on Thursdays, I tell you. But anyway, anyway, uh, you know I I like iZombie. Huh? You know, it's 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 not a deep show. It's, you know, it's not getting a lot of substance. It's got the CW effect, pretty people with problems, right? But it's fun. I really have a thing for Peyton. Like, she's not usually my type, but I just really, like, find her attractive. You know, but they do have a lot of... They do focus, like, a lot of CW shows tend to focus a lot. and it, Or at least they derail when it comes to the romance stuff. But... You know, you have to love that, or you just kind of learn to live with it. Or you, you really hate it, and you just don't bother the show at all. That's your prerogative, you know, I get it. But yeah, back to Prison Break 5, I think that's what I was getting up to. Uh, season 5. Um, actually, I don't think I am caught up. I first saw the first two episodes, I think I talked to you guys about that. Yeah, I definitely did. Um, and, you know, for those that, that saw season 4, you're like, well, how could it be a season 5? Uh... Let's just say uh, most of the characters come back, and we'll leave it at that. Legions are break, so that gives me, that's good. Give me a little, little uh, break, break from TV. It's important work, you know. Uh, and then Better Call Saul, I still keep meaning to watch that, and I just don't get around to it. But uh, that's been the TV stuff. So let's talk about the more adult stuff, the more life stuff, IRL. Um, that work life, yo. So I'm gonna get, you know, I, I'm under NDA like a lot of work I do, so I can't really talk, to, you know, at least not in public about details of it. But I will tell you, I will tell you that I am spent, and one of the big reasons I'm spent is because I've been traveling a lot. Now, you guys can feel free to tweet me at Yogizilla. Leave us a voicemail message or text message, 646-801-2149. At 646-801-2149. I'm going to vent a little bit about the job. I mean, I love it, and I'm grateful for it because uh, it pays well. I like, I love the people. It's in a great industry. Uh, a lot of exposures to different kind of technology and different kind of projects. It's great. And, I, and I'm not just doing the break-fix stuff that a lot of IT people do. I'm doing the coding, I'm doing the strategic stuff, I'm, you know, in the leadership role, and, you know, I report directly to the CEO and the COO of the company, so it's really exciting, uh, it's, it's just the right position I've been wait, waiting for, uh, and I've got lots of offers, but most of them, when they wanted me to relocate, I'm like, no, 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 moving sucks, and also, you know, you relocate too much, and then eventually you just never set roots, and that eats away your spirit, but back to this point, back to this point, so, uh, one of the big things that they they said, uh, well, actually, it wasn't even big. Pretty much at the very end of our last interview meeting, the CEO said, "Oh yeah, so how about travel? You know, you know, sometimes, you know, occasionally, you know, you might need to travel. Is that would that be a problem?" I'm like, nope, because occasionally to me means once a month, maybe once a week. That's occasionally, as opposed to frequently. Or constantly. This week has been constantly. Well, maybe more frequently. But still. When I have to go to, you know, two to four locations at once. It's a little rough. It's a little rough. And Stan says, don't do it. I highly doubt that anyone from my company is going to listen to this podcast. <laughs> and I'm not complaining. I'm not complaining. You know, I'm, but, uh, you know, it's just... This, this is a podcast. This is where I speak honestly and just vent. I'm venting. So, I mean, I'm going to forget about it and, and not, uh, half of the stuff I say, I don't mean, I, you know. <laughs> Stan's such a by-the-book guy. He's like, no, careful, you know. It might go back to your bosses. You know, they, they know where I'm at with it. We have a very open dialogue. Uh, so, I'm not going to dig too deep in it. 
that's the, you know that's, that's one of the things. I think every 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 job, every gig has uh, opportunities, right, and challenges, and you just have to make an internal decision: is this really for me? You know, and do the pros outweigh the the cons? And you know, my answer whole, wholeheartedly is yeah, the pros do uh outweigh the cons. So just throwing that out there. The other thing too, uh, we have a lot of uh, production floor environments that are massive, and as such, there's a lot of a lot of uh, body heat and ambient heat from the environment, and a lot of times there's not really fans or cooling systems in place, so not sufficient. So, my prediction is. If I keep moving around at the rate I am right now, I'm gonna probably start off being really sick. I've actually been kind of like under the weather, but I'm you know fighting it off with vitamin C and you know the exercise helps keep the energy going and lots of, lots more coffee than I usually drink. Well, I'm a big drop coffee drinker anyway. But uh, yeah, I think in like six months I'm probably gonna lose like 30, 40 pounds. I met a guy that's worked at the company. Eight years, and he does a lot of running around. Uh, so he's like always working up a sweat, and he eats a lot. This is the kind of guy take it to take him to all, all you keep buffet. He's probably got at least three fully stacked plates of food, right? And he and I couldn't believe, you know, I found out after the fact because he's a skinny dude. He's kind of like Eminem skinny, right? I think Eminem's a pretty skinny guy, you know. From, when I think of skinny people, I was like one of the famous people that comes to mind. I don't know why. That's my benchmark. Uh, or Kate Moss. There you go. M most of you won't. Uh, well, a good number of you probably won't know, remember Kate Moss. But anyway. So I look at him and, and, and he said, hey, yeah, I used to be uh, 265 pounds. This guy's got to be like maybe 120 soaking wet. Gwyneth Paltrow. Yeah, she's pretty skinny too. That's a good one. Was it when is she with Jim, with uh, Jim Carrey, many moons ago? I saw it for some reason what I think about her now because she doesn't really do anything these days that I know of. <laughs> she used to be like a household name and then just kind of disappeared. Um. So yeah, I, I I anticipate there's gonna I'm gonna lose at least twenty pounds, which was good because I'll probably eat, end up eating like crap. I try to bring up a lot of. I try to bring my food my wor work. My food, home. No, I'm trying to bring food. My lunch from home. There we go. Wow. Uh, Cause otherwise, and I try to bring snacks. I think the key is moderation, small portions, and eat throughout the day so you don't get lightheaded and end up binging. You know. Cold play singer Gwyneth Paltrow. What? <laughs> All she does is goop. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I, I I haven't heard of her in ages. So I no clue what she's doing. I'm honestly, probably not very interested either. She's all right though, I guess. I have no personal qualms with her. Um, that's that's the that's the thing. Uh, a lot of the traveling is gonna be local, so that's good. But I might be up your way if you're in the Baltimore area. You know, D slash DC area, uh, New Jersey, um, Louisiana. Uh, where else am I, am I slated to go? There's a few other places, but those are the ones that come to mind. If you're in those areas, yeah, you know, get get with me on Discord or whatever, and we'll uh, we'll do a meetup or something, you know, and hang out. Be cool. Maybe we'll play some board games, some card games or something. That'd be neat. Kill two birds, one stone, you know? If I travel, I like to make it worth it because I'm not a huge fan of travel these days. I used to be big on it, and now I'm like, kind of like, I like to settle in more into routine and kind of get the most out of it. Oh, Gwyneth Paltrow is married to Chris Martin from Coldplay. Oh. That I didn't know. Dinner with Yogi. That's not like a really like shitty prize that I'd give out. Like, hey, the, the grand prize winner will have dinner with Yogi. <laughs> You're welcome.
Like, I'm going to do that one day. Just give out really shitty prizes. Second prize winner wins belly button lint from Stan Farina. <laughs> no, we do a podcast of it. We just podcast everything. That's what we should do. I got a really nice uh, voice recorder that has like the mic with the windscreen on it, noise cancellation. It's been pretty good, so we can record remotely on the go. That'd be pretty fun. I, there's a few podcasts I listen to like that. One, one is called I think Sam's Nation. I don't listen to them that often. It's like you know here and there when I want a little change of pace. And Sam's podcast is pretty cool, but uh. He does little segments where he might be driving or walking or in the store or something. Like these life segments. And then uh, a lot of times he has so much background noise. It's like he doesn't do any post-production work. Kind of drives me crazy. Oh, Gwyneth Paltrow might be divorcing him. Oh, interesting. Is Chris Martin the guy from Coldplay... His sense of, uh, of uh, fashion is interesting. He wears like really tight skinny jeans. Like, uh, it's really hard for me to get past that. I get that some people can pull them off, but and a lot of bright colors and like tight T-shirts. If I recall, that's the image I have in my mind. Huh? And I'm picturing him with like a tie-dye shirt and like uh, faded skinny jeans and like neon colored sneakers for some reason <laughs> oh yeah he pulls it off but skinny jeans man why 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 would you, why would you men like women okay i get it well, for women, some women look really cute in them but dudes like by by design the skinny jeans are crushing your goods why would you subject yourself to that i don't know Oh, Stan already has a plan. We're thinking uh, when I'm in the Baltimore area, I might take a road trip up to New York. It depends. I'm going to try to line it up. So I'm guessing if I'm going to be out there, it's going to be a week-long affair. Same thing with New Jersey. So, yeah, that could work out as long as we avoid that crazy uh, D.C. traffic. You know, I, we can make it a weekend thing. Then of course I gotta, gotta miss my I gotta visit my mom. I miss her. My mom's cool. Everybody loves my mom. She's a ball buster, but like with strangers, she's like really really sweet. Once she like once she get past her shell, cause she's, she's more she's more of a true introvert. Like I'm an introvert, but if I, a lot of times when I take the Myers Briggs uh, you know personality assessment, it puts me at like fifteen percent extrovert I think it's about right I've worked really hard to be more of an outgoing and social conversational introvert but I still mostly live inside my head so people don't understand like just because you're an introvert doesn't mean you're antisocial or don't need people that's the wrong takeaway <laughs> oh yeah you like that <laughs> I mean I'll eventually probably grow up back out a little bit more but yeah, for this hotter weather, it's, I don't know, people debate about that. They're like, oh, it, 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 beard hair, facial hair doesn't make you hot. I don't know. I mean, I, I, I can certainly live with it, but, you know, first impression of everything. Yeah, that's the one thing that ha hasn't changed, especially not in the business world. So even though I already have allies, uh, you know, everybody wants to be the boss, no matter where you send the org chart. So... And the gossip can happen. It's like, all right, I'm not going to give him any ammo. And I'm not even wearing my piercings, so. Yep. <laughs> okay. Yeah, if you want to come on the show and, t and share the story, I don't know if you want to do it live. It's up to you. I mean, I don't blame you if you don't, because uh, I know people worry about that. But let's be honest. Uh, podcasts are such a niche thing. Even if you do a video component, people are like... They're not going to bother for the most part. Not people you work with. <laughs> Wait, I'm lost now. Oh, oh, does he? Oh, okay. 
Well, that's interesting then. Yeah, that 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 would not happen. At best, there's maybe like a couple of people that I can see being podcast people, and one of them is our brand strategist, and we're cool. So like, if he heard something, I don't think he'd be like gossiping about it. But you never know. But uh, shout out to you. You know who you are if you're out there. Good guy. You're a good guy. I like you. I like everybody in the company. But you know, there's always you always there's people that a lot of times with in businesses people are outwardly cool, right? And then like then they say stuff behind your back and then they like have these schemes and stuff. So like those are people you gotta be careful uh, with, you know, what you say around them. You know. So I'll tell you what you want to do is set up a little honey pot and plant like uh false information with select people so you know if that information gets out you know who the people are with the big mouths <laughs> and that's something I definitely do and it's, it's gotta be something that won't be bad but juicy enough that I want to share it you know what I mean something that you can position and spin in your favor or to avoid any kind of blowback little tricks you pick up the more you work so for you younger folks out there that's my my wisdom that I that I'll impart upon you before before I leave and relinquish this mortal coil. What? No, I'm not dying. I'm being morbid. I don't know why. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that's the big thing. To, uh, there's politics in every in every company, though. It's unavoidable. So, biggest thing is not so much learning the job and having the technical skills. It's uh, getting a real feel for the culture and acclimating to it and integrating yourself with it. And culture is another thing. It's, you know, the, the, the core values, the individual motives, the clicks, um, the chain of command, who has pulled laterally and down and up the org chart. Um, you know, who has seniority. Uh, you know, stuff like that. It's all, it's all things you want to kind of get a, a feel for. I'm reading what uh, Chris uh, Chris Gannon from the Game of Death podcast uh, has here in the chat. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, I really want to speak to that, but I... I uh, at least the this SEO part, cause that drives me nuts. Boy, that's yeah. All I'm gonna say is, people have to temper expectations, like especially with you know, marketing. Like people think they read something online and suddenly they're experts. Or just that happens with technology too, with IT work. It's like, oh yeah, I saw a video, so now I know it's how to do what you do. Oh, cool. Because experience has nothing to do with anything, right? Uh, experience is even more important than you know college these days. I mean, colleges and the school in general, they're teaching stuff that's five to ten years old. Cause most of the teachers are so out of touch with the actual field work. They're dealing all the theoretical stuff. So by the time you get out there, it's like you have to relearn stuff and learn on the job. You have a cousin in Puerto Rico or in public relations? <laughs> you have to elaborate, Stan. See, I think I see PR. And I generally, depending on the kind, I generally think Puerto Rico. Uh, yes. Oh. Yeah, oh. Yeah, uh, Puerto Rico is starting to get a lot of tech companies. I'm, I'm glad you mentioned that. Something I kind of wanted to mention. Um, AT and T has a few locations up there. And uh, oh gosh, I forget what else. Cisco, I think. Uh, there's a few other ones. I, I had a list of them. Cause I was, you know, even thinking ahead. Like one day, I w I would like to be back in Puerto Rico. I don't know my family would go for it, but, you know, who knows? Um, there's a lot of stuff changing over there. 
So, like, what they do is, you know, they kind of do, like, what Canada does, and they, and you know, certain states do it, too. They, like, uh, give companies incentives for moving out there. Georgia's pretty big on that, too. A lot of, a lot of stuff are coming out to Augusta right now. It's cool. Slowly but surely. Um, but, yeah, that, that's, the, the tech hub is kind of developing out there for sure. And, Chris, my answer to that is No. S single word, keyword ca ad campaigns, that's crazy talk. Unless you have, have something that's magically niche. This is the thing, if you go for the long tail, you'll end up capturing some of the the more specific, the more general terms, rather. So, why would you limit yourself? I don't know. People are weird. Why do clients ask strange stuff of us? You know, if you trust, you gotta trust the people. If you hire people, it's because you see that they have these skills. So don't micromanage them unless that's the kind of work habit, work style they, they work, they respond to, right? Tell them what you need, what, you, what the end result is, what the business need is, what your pain points are, and let them develop the solution that actually works. Something that they're really good at and that they have experience with they have a proven track record with not something you read online or saw on a YouTube video oh this is what people are doing oh oh man I'm sweating up a storm over here now sorry you might hear the, the fan might be coming up on the recording a little bit but let's lower it um so that's my week in a nutshell I really want to get back to uh, Dragon Age Inquisition um, play some more Division, Pinball FX2, Awesome Knots, Paladins, a lot of great stuff going on. You know, maybe even some Gwent. But I definitely want to wrap up uh, Dragon Age Inquisition because I'm about 45 hours in and I'm still not experiencing what Beard and Hat said was terrible. So, I guess maybe I just have poor taste in games. <laughs> Yes, a Diablo 3, yes. Though now everybody's ahead of me again. So I might just start a new character or solo the rest of my campaign on my main for the Xbox. <sighs> Let's see what else we got here on the docket. So again, I want to remind you, ways to connect with us. Oh yeah, we could do a season character together. Um... I like I love that seasons are finally on console, even though Blizzard was so adamant that they would not do that. Um, oh yeah, you know I'm also on the market for a new vehicle. Yeah, because uh, my current vehicle is on its last legs, and I finally decided I'm not going to dump any more money to it. So I'm kind of Ubering around and carpooling the best way I can, and it's made things even more difficult <laughs> uh, with the occasional travel ah, I love you guys it's cool it's all it's all a good good fun what's wrong with it is it's stuff that I could a lot of it's stuff that I could probably fix well some of it is but it's just so much stuff it's become a, a, a money pit uh, not worth dumping any more money into it you have to know when to cut it off. People are like, oh, yeah, you can fix that. And then I'm like, well, they got this too. Well, you can fix that too. It's like, yeah, but parts still cost money. Even if you go to a pull apart and pick it yourself, you know, from a salvage yard, it's just not worth it. I need something de dependable. Because, like, anytime we dump money into this car, something else breaks. It's like, I'm like, no. It's just not. I'm done with uh, used cars. I'm, gonna, I'm finally just going to get a, u a new vehicle. Happy birthday. What the heck? Oh! Oh, snap! <laughs> I forgot I had that set up. The the uh, notification. We got a donation from War Daddy for my birthday. Yeah, my birthday was yesterday. See, I don't like to talk about myself that much. I, like, I forgot to mention, the, I guess, the big thing of, my, of the week. I'll be celebrating this weekend officially. You know. It's really hard uh, when you got a really demanding job. It's hard for me to have 
must up the energy to do something fun. You know, we got a little dinner. You know, some cake. I got some really cool gifts, though. That I can show you guys. I got this Star Trek communicator. That's pretty nifty. And then I got this little TARDIS. Little mini TARDIS with a little chain. What else? And then I got... That's pretty heavy. You, see, you guys see that? Uh, right there. No, right here. Right here. That's a DT. Pretty good. No, I'm at 60 yet. I'm 55. So I'm almost there. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's a... It's pretty cool. It's got a little remote control on it, and it does all the sound. It has a projector. So, yeah. I will be playing that with that this weekend. And, uh, driving our pets crazy. That'll be fun. I'm actually looking forward to that. I'm a big kid at heart. Yeah, you gotta, you gotta keep it, keep yourself young, you know? But, uh, and that better half is a little spoiler. Like, have you played with it yet? I'm like, no, because I got a lot of work. I have VPN access now, so I'm taking work with me home. And then, like, you know, get home. And you know, so, it's been so hot, take a shower. You know, if I've, if I've been sweating a lot, and then get my lunch ready for the next day. Tidy up at the house a little bit. Do a little bonding with the fam. Blah, 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 you know. You know the deal. And then by the time you all, you know, get your clothes ready for the next day. By the time you get all that stuff done. It's like, oh, time for bed. And then I have sleep problems. I'm not whining, I swear. But I, I I share these vent I I vent and I say I share this stuff with you guys. Cause I know there's people out there that like they're like, man, I can't be the only one that feel this way, so you're not alone. And everybody needs a channel an outlet to to vent. So I think podcasts are really good for that. And uh for anyone worried, oh well well, I'm worried who might find my podcast. I believe being authentic, you know, don't have verbal vomit. There has to be some kind of filter. But I think ultimately the truth is always going to come out, right? So why pull your punches? Be who you are. And if that results in opportunities that are, you miss, those, those probably weren't for you. Something better is on the way. I firmly believe that. It's like, especially in business, if you do work for yourself, for example, you have a, you know, you could do a consulting business or you know, own some kind of company, whatever you do. The customers, you know, especially if you work with clients that more so than customers, they kind of mean the same thing. But it's important to handpick the clients, work with the right people, even the vendors, you know, work with the right people so you're not wasting time with the wrong ones. That's something that. They really should teach you and reinforce a lot in school, but they don't. Yet. A lot of people learn that lesson the hard way. Ooh, it's got a cool message. Someone is sending me a handcrafted goodie for my birthday. I'm excited. I don't know if you want me to put it out there. I was about to say Say the name too. I'm like, well, then I just did. Lol. Oh man. So War Child's here in the in the Twitch chat, as you see, saw with the notification. But uh, but he's uh, medicated because he went to the dentist today. That stuff is strong. It'll, it'll stay with you. So how are we on time? Oh, actually, actually. With quite a bit. So yeah, if you guys don't know, uh, Chris Gannon uh, is a pretty creative person. Him and his wife are both creative folks. And uh, on his Instagram, he shares these uh, perler crafts that are usually video game or anime uh, themed. So he sent me one of those. I'm like, ooh, what can it be? I like, I like if I, you know, I was thinking about that, uh, Stan, uh, 
sent a ver- shared a very intimate story on uh, on Facebook about a recent departure in his family, and he was talking about how he is one of some of his fondest memories is always uh, corresponding versus mail via email, and how once email came around, he switched to that, and he regrets it. You know, think about that. I used to have pen pals in different countries, and I used to try to make it a habit to at least send one piece of handwritten mail to a random friend or family member. Uh, I didn't stick with it every month, but I would do it, you know, a few times a year. Sending out Christmas cards, you know, all that, all that stuff, and uh, we just, we're just so bogged down with. You know, overwhelmed by by content, the hustle bustle of everyday life too, and then uh, maybe a part of it is also just laziness and a sense of entitlement. It's like, yeah, if it's not instant, we don't get that. If you don't get that instant gratification, nope, done. So it's kind of a shame. Oh, and this just in, I don't know if I mentioned this, but uh, Ghost Recon Wildlands has season challenges, so that's how they're gonna keep the game fresh. Uh, I need to eventually get that game. Oh, yeah, and uh, Chris Gannon, you can find him over at Death of Nation on Instagram if you want to connect with him. Uh, what do I want a sprite of? It's a good question. Well, I'm really big on the waifu in the uh, different anime. It'd have to be either... Hmm. Like, Nami's really cute, but Once Piece characters all have, like, the really freakishly... Freakishly tall thing going on. So I'd rather have like a nice, thick kind of woman, like Lucy Hartfilia from uh, Fairy Tale. She's pretty thick if you look at her. She's curvy in all the right places. I like that. Uh, and I'm I'm talking so seriously about this. Like I'm really thinking about getting with her in the future. <laughs> like she's a real person. Uh, you can have you can have crushes. Look. I've spoken for it doesn't mean I'm dead, all right? Um, who else do I like? Scarlet. There's a there's a Scar- Scarlet from Fairy Tales, great too. Man, no one's coming to my mind right now. I'm like totally brain farting, so I might I might get back to you on that. Those are just the ones that come to mind right now. <laughs> oh man! All right, that's cool. See, more reasons for you guys to be on Discord. Because you get to see some of this, experience some of this inside of baseball, so to speak. Which again, geekyanswers.net forward slash Discord. Handy dandy link right there. And don't forget, this show, wherever you might be listening or watching right now, you get it a lot of different ways. My phone ringing. Hi, kitty. Who's calling? Who's calling me? Okay. I'm being weird. I know. I'm being unprofessional. Hmm. Do we have a hard and fast rule for 18 plus only on Discord? That's a good question. We do try to limit. I try not to bring anyone in that's uh, underage. But they always kind of sneak in and not really much you can do about it. Given no age controls on Discord, per se. So, that's another reason why I didn't, I was hesitant to promote it openly, right? Even on Facebook, uh, we try to keep it 18 plus only, but, you know, friends of friends come in and it's like, well, you can't really be a jerk about it, right? But that's, that's kind of the rule of thumb. We try to, we're trying to build more of a mature gaming community on that side for sure. Just geek community as a whole. None of the toxicity and drama and bullshit that happens in other communities. Ain't nobody got time for that. But yeah, anyway, back to what I was saying. Mm, gassy. We have uh, other podcasts you can listen to. And this podcast included, you can listen to them on uh, different apps and uh, platforms like uh, TuneIn Radio, uh, Cast, which is also on Xbox One, Google Play, iTunes, uh, Stitcher, Play FM, and just tons more. <laughs> Aww. 
Yeah, you, you, that's the way it always works. Every time the, the community and our a team gets active, then, like, I get super busy. This will eventually sync up. <laughs> uh, what can you do? We still have the weekends. We still have the weekends. I'm not dead. What's Blue doing? Well, I got... Blue's laying down. Oh, she knows what I'm talking about. She's just... She had her back to me, but she's kind of like looking over her shoulder, like, yeah. And then the baby cat's over here. For some reason, she likes to hide under stuff in the man cave. And then she comes out of hiding and eats. I think she's hiding from the kids. Because they just smother her. She feels suffocated. And I'm like, you know, she likes to be loved on, but like you guys are too aggressive about it. <laughs> oh, boy. Man, you're already almost level 70 on your season character for Xbox One, so you're going to run rifts. Damn. Uh, yeah, I'm going to do it with the level one. You're going to power level me, son. Where let's do it. I'm debating if I'm going to do uh, Witch Doctor or Demon Hunter next. I think that's what I was looking at, pretty sure. Man, all, all, the, all the classes are really fun. I don't know. I know, I even got you converted to Xbox One, and then, I know. But you, there's, there's still other people. There's still other folks. We need to keep things moving, even when I'm not around. That's what happens a lot of times. It's like, when I'm like not facilitating stuff, then everybody just figures, oh, well, I, that's my excuse. I'll just disappear. <laughs> oh, which doctor? I thought, oh, I was about to sing a song. I told the witch doctor. No, 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 let's not do that. We don't need that yet, wake. Uh, and some of the other shows we got that we syndicate or the exclusive on our network. We have the B Team Podcast, Gaming Death, which I mentioned a bunch of times earlier. 365 Flicks, Ghost Man and Demon Hunter, and The Worst Radio Show. So. <laughs> yeah, you gotta be persistent to get things moving, like. Do it on Discord and then post on the Facebook group. It's like everybody's got weird schedules right now, cause like War Child's on East Coast, but he's got baby, so now he has no schedule. <laughs> cause that's how it is. Uh, what else? What else? What else? Like I said, it's gonna be a different kind of spiel. Uh, just talking openly, but we should jump ahead. And um, well, I do want to say that I will. I do have plans to do at least another weekly stream, um, and then scale up from there. So I, I want to bring Retro Friday because I have so many things lined up, and I really do love retro game. It's just getting into that routine, you know. And uh, a lot of time with streaming, it's like if you don't do it really hard. Put, invest a lot of time into it, you don't get any returns. But I want to just do it for fun. And then whoever supports it on YouTube or Twitch, cool. I also mess around with Beam a little more. Do like little ad hoc streams from my ex straight from my Xbox One on there. Uh, da -da 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 what we got? <laughs> All right. Um, speaking of Xbox Live, we do have the Geeky Answer Network groups on Facebook and. Well, we have the Geeky Antis groups on Facebook for different kind of activities and interests. What are you doing, kitty? Hi, kitty. I'm getting you my foot. My foot. What are you doing? There's a little one. Hey, fun. He's a cutie. Hi, baby. Thank you for loving on me. Hi. See, kitty. She doesn't like being held as much, but she does like uh, being rubbed. She's rubbing on my hand and my legs right now. Uh, Beam is Twitch with like virtually no latency, no stream delay, um, and like a lot of third-party support and a more open kind of setup. It's something that uh, 
Team Major put together and Microsoft bought and has been developing out. And it's now their preferred streaming platform on Xbox One. And the reason it's unique is because it builds, it really focuses on interaction, which is something that Twitch sucks on. A lot of people stream live on Twitch. And I don't get why they just don't do pre-recorded because they ignore their chat. So what's the point of doing a live thing if you're not doing live interaction? So with Beam, they have things that kind of make that a lot easier for streamers. So it's, it flows better. For example, uh, you know, depending on what kind of support different developers have incorporated into their games, you could uh, imp make the people in the chat can impact what happens in in the video game. And if it isn't supported natively, what what they do is they have little hooks where they could give you little you know quests and mission challenges and stuff to complete. Um, and then, you know, you kind of go off a checklist. I haven't messed with that too much. Because, uh, again, stability, and, you know, moving, changeover, you know, it's, it's a pain in the butt. I don't care how much better people think it is. It's where, it's where Twitch used to be when it started off, where people actually help each other out and it's a sense of community. But unfortunately, what happens whenever those kind of things grow, you know, people will switch to it because they think, oh, this is... This is the network. This is the platform. This is the tool. And then when it gets crit hits critical mass, everybody stops giving a fuck. And then it goes back to the same shit. Sadly. And um, some of that is part de by design, and some of that is just because human nature. Right? People are shitty. What can you do? So those are the plugs and uh, IRL stuff. Let's break into the news and we'll start wrapping it up because I really do need to try to get some sleep. Uh, so, obligatory news, folks. I feel like I should do something really epic for it. Obligatory news. Errands. That used to be how we did it. Yeah. I forgot about that. And then, and then I'd go, ding. I have to bring that back. But, uh, first up. One of the headlines that's been coming in today, I think it really started, if not mistaken, is uh, Bill O'Reilly has been fired by Fox due to sexual harassment. And uh, apparently he denies the allegations. He says something to the effect of being extremely disheartened by the false allegations. And uh, but uh, it's really hard to deny things when he's making payments to random women to keep them quiet. Apparently, there was 13 million in gag orders or settlements that took place out of court just to keep keep him out of, off the radar. What the heck? Oh. Cat's being silly. She's playing with the blinds. So that's interesting. You know, the reason I I, I put I decided to talk about this is because. Bill, I like I enjoy Bill O'Reilly. It's fun to watch his interviews, and he's really like aggressive. But he's also a bit of a dick, so I'm not surprised at all. He always had a kind of that creeper look to him, like someone like that that's like so aggressive's got to be like really pent up <laughs> and part of really really shitty in relationships in general. It's like uh, guys at a construction site. Cat calling. <laughs> um, so that's interesting. I, I don't know. I'm not surprised by the news. I don't know if you guys are, but if you want to talk about it, you know, you send us email, mail at geekyanswers.net, uh, voicemail or SMS, 646-801-2149. Of course, Twitter is at geekyantics, and I'm at, at yogizilla. Lots of ways to connect with us. And, of course, Facebook, as I mentioned earlier. Twitch, all that good stuff. So there's a way to connect us. Just, just Google us or Bing us, whatever you're doing. You'll find us. Um, in fact, we're one of the top hits for... We're usually number one for Geeky Network. Just want to throw that out there. Yep. <laughs> that SEO, though. Nothing that, that happened, and uh, this is more for the sports fans out there. See, I'm sad that Beard's not around. He's not even on Discord. Um... Oh, by the way, I miss you guys on Discord too. I, I need to. It's really hard for me to check it during the day because I'm just so busy. But um, 
Yeah, everybody's really excited to have me there. Uh, they, they want me to make things better. We have a long road ahead. But anyway, that's neither here nor there. Um, so a uh, football player, former uh, Patriots player, Aaron Hernandez committed suicide. And the thing that makes this really crazy is that I could have sworn he was acquitted of his charges. I don't know if he had multiple charges. I know there was one charge of double homicide, but he was already serving a life sentence. So I don't, I don't, I didn't dig deep enough. I know I'm terrible, terrible at reporting, but, um, you know, it's like, Hey, you got some good news. There's hope. Why would you just throw in a towel at that? And it's, it's, it's eye opening, you know, I think a lot of us struggle with those kind of thoughts and it's a constant battle to, to stay positive, you know? No matter how thick of a skin you are, I think everybody has the breaking point, and it's important to know what that is and mitigate the the effects of certain things that weigh down on you. Just make better decisions. Try to you can't plan ahead for all adversity, but there's a lot of things you can't plan for. All right. Ooh, he's doing the Zelda sprite. Nice. All right. So Chris Gannon, the Gaming Death Podcast, heading out. And I'm going to be Ronery again because now Stan's on the phone. And now Stan's gone too. Oh, so, hey, I'm wrapping up soon anyway. Uh, just a, f- a few more things here. There's been a lot of buzz about the Xbox One Scorpio. I don't think we really need to rehash that. Um, and there was some other stuff too. I'm mad bald. Yeah. Yeah, son. I'm mad bald. I said that. Usually I put the banana on because I sweat so much that what happens is like I start, it starts going on the headphone and then it gets all nasty. But I said F it today. So you guys can see my shiny head. You know. There you go. You're welcome. My gift to you. I'm actually wrapping up because I'm tired. Looks like my head is upside down. Ah! Let's see what you did there. Oh, that's a good one. <laughs> I wonder if I can do that like, I should be able to flip my video upside down and talk like that. That could be a thing. I don't know if you guys ever saw Public Access. This is more in New York. There was this guy that used to do characters. That's just, it was a whole group. But it started off as one guy, and he would play characters as his chin. So he'd be upside down, and he would dress up his chin and like put lipstick on and stuff, and like put a little paste little eyeballs on the bottom of his chin. Was it like that? Yeah. I'm trying to remember. Something like that. And it was just weird looking. And he just talked like that. And it was just throw you off because the mouth wouldn't move the way you expected to. I don't know. Oh, can you say how much you hate offshore tech support? Oh, yeah. Don't get me started. Outsourcing as a whole is, is rough because... A lot of times what happens is the the consultants want to be indispensable. You know, service people as a whole want to be indispensable, whether it's a mechanic, a doctor, you know, IT consultant. So, you know, they, they diagnose things to keep you coming back. And they also, so that they do work that you didn't ask for, or they offer advice that you didn't ask for, and, you know, or they... They uh, hold your stuff hostage. That's that's what the tech consultants tend to do. They 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 don't give you access, and like it's like, well, if I request it, this is something we're paying for. Oh, well, we're not equipped for that. Like uh, it's like, oh well, you're leasing it out, you're renting it out. They find so many ways to avoid giving you access or sharing documentation. It's like, well. Yeah, I get this a certain degree of trade secrets for your business, but these are our biz- company's resources. So, uh, yeah, outsource as a whole is a pain in the butt. So what's Peter, what's Peter saying? They had the wrong ticket they had been looking at all week. Nearly had me bring down a virtual machine server. Oh, boy. The cloud, son. If you were slightly dumber, you could have lost your job. Boy, oh, boy. Oh, yeah. You can't blindly listen to what they tell you to do on tech support. That's what they'll do. They'll, they'll like say, "All right, you know, just delete your account, and then we're gonna 
reinstall it, like delete it or remove it. There's a difference. <laughs> like, you know, unbinding it versus deactivating and deleting, you know. Anyway. So this week has been a week of PR blunders, and actually, uh, War Daddy reminded me of this. I actually, I meant to talk about this uh, on our website and on the show. Actually, um, I'm, I'm big on the marketing stuff. I, I'm, I have a very entrepreneurial mindset, and a lot, a lot of you geeks out there have a similar mindset. And this is just a, some fun story this shit. So Pepsi, United Airlines, some other people had some. Uh, PR blunders. I'm going to just focus on Pepsi and United Airlines. So let's start with Pepsi. They had a commercial that it had a Jenner in it. Uh, Kendall Jenner. Um, and it was basically a whole diversity piece, right? But they did it wrong. You know, Kendall Jenner, it was I didn't see it. I just heard what peop what it was like. And basically, Kendall Jenner's doing whatever Kendall Jenner's doing, and then she sees uh, a group of of uh, black people doing the Black Lives Movement march, protesting, and then women's and then the women's march, and she kind of nods. Oh, and what was it? Uh, So this is what they, they this is, they've described it better than I can. Uh, so the use of protesters, and this is from uh, KessieGardner at uh, WordPress.com. All right, so it says the use of protesters in commercial centered around a young white reality television star and model, Kendall Jenner, being mesmerized by a large group of ethnically diverse people marching down the street holding signs that said "Join the conversation." So I don't see anything wrong with it so far. Is it and it's a test? It says is it a testament? to show how disjointed the Pepsi internal ad agency was. What could this young model possibly know about the Black Lives Movement and the Women's March? Not to mention the pivotal moment when she chucks her blonde wig at the seemingly subservient black women waiting in the wings. Yeah, I can see where that could be taken wrong. But here's my, my take on it. With the problem, I, I think, with the backlash on this is that it wasn't as bad as people say it was. It was not as offensive as it was complete tone deaf. <laughs> Whereas, we, oh, you say, a lot of people can't seem to get PR right lately. Whereas, Wendy just goes full meme and everyone loves them. Yeah. That's true. Um, my, my, my thing with it is this. You know, I, I'm very big on rights. You know, and activism and all that stuff. And there are a lot of minorities and groups that have issues but there's also a, a lot of these people are talking about um, white people are becoming the minority now if they haven't already in our country um, and I think a lot of I'm not saying there isn't there aren't problems but I don't know if they are as much as they are black problems as they are human problems and I think that's the mindset we need to approach it more Rather than segregating ourselves more, because you fight for small groups and then you ignore the other groups, and that and that's the thing that attitude of you know. And I'm a minority. I'm a Latino, you know, and I I could trace my roots back to all kinds of diversity. I'm not gonna pull the the black card, but I could, you know. But the the thing is, it, 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 I'm even offended by it because a lot of times see, you have people like, oh, you don't understand what it's like. Well, everybody has struggles. So, like, when you automatically assume people don't know what it's like, you're being combative and you're making people less receptive to what you have to say and, and less likely to join your cause. So why are we more inclusive than exclusive? <laughs> so Beard wants to know why, how, it got so, how advertising got so bad in 10 years. You know, it's because they're trying to be relevant and they're trying to stick with the old way of doing things, but with a new flavor. So they see the stuff that's on social media, and they're like, well, social media really isn't important. It's just from print ads and TV spots and blah, blah, blah. That's, that's where the money's at. 
but they're trying to be make it look like a you have a tone of social media type of things and you know it's just that work and, and and so you know the takeaway this particular writer put and a lot of people are saying is you know if you're not a political brand don't get involved in politics um, and but you know Pepsi has always kind of been a lifestyle brand yeah they sell soda but their brand is about lifestyle they're selling a lifestyle like they you know in the 80s they had the gotta have it card it's about having the things you want in life and enjoying life you know and that's usually what I picture with Pepsi is like something like just pop that can and then like ah, you know and do, doing things you know Coke kind of does the same thing too and so and politics you know is kind of part of life it's the things you can't avoid it's a real life issue not so much politics it's real life so that they try to be real and I commend them for that do they do it wrong well depends I don't know they, it's wrong because they didn't take into account how sensitive people are and how everything can be taken out of context so that was their mistake I don't think it's, it was as bad from what I got to small clip I got to see before they pulled it down and what I've read of the description I'm like I don't see the big deal I don't know people are saying about it it's like it, 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 again they just need people to crucify right we all need something to complain about so now the United Airlines situation that is a huge thing because they pulled a passenger off a plane because they overbooked that plane and I think they pulled four passengers um, and I know Pepsi's happy about this because it's overshadowed their their kind of uh, misstep <laughs> So they, they, I believe they pulled four passengers. And they, you know, no one volunteered. Of course, because of course they wanted. Actually, no, a couple did, and they still needed like two more people. And one guy was combative and refused. Um, I don't know how combative he was, but it escalated quickly. They got a little rough with him and pulled him away. Yeah, they had, they picked the, the so-called volunteers through a computer algorithm, so no one actually came came forth. Um. Oh yeah, they oh, not over, but they need to fly staff to the next stop. That's what it was, right? But they positioned it. They did say, I think, that they overbooked, but then they threw it off, and we need to fly staff to the next stop. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Either way, it's an oversight, right? Um. So anyway, uh. So for the inconvenience, they did offer, uh, I think, nine hundred dollars U.S. So that's pretty good, right? Uh, I think that would have been a good compensation because that would have covered your rebooking, your flight change, and you probably would have had something left over. So, not a bad deal. But the, apparently, the guy that w that refused to move was a doctor, and he needed to get to some patients. Um, I don't know if it's true or not, but I think they should have taken that account and maybe moved out to another person. Maybe ask for credentials before letting it escalate so quickly. I don't know. It could have been handled better. But the worst part about it is, is this. If in the moment, we all mess up. But then they had time to think about it and kind of dissect it and do some critical thinking, get to the root cause of everything, get to the heart of the situation, you know, all that stuff. Um, they offered Ray Hooks and concussions, too. Yeah. The assault part, not cool. Oh, they did offer a free flight with the money, too. Oh, that's even better. But this is the thing to see that adds insult to injury, literally. Because, um, you know, they do, they, they, it is legal for them to pull you, and they could get physical to the point of physically removing you, but they cannot throw fists. That's, that's where it gets ugly. Um, that's why loss prevention guys have a real tough job, because they can get physical, but to a certain extent and then there's certain places where they can't stop a uh, shoplifter and stuff this is, that's a whole interesting thing in that zone but anyway back to this so this is from the CEO of United Airlines Oscar Munoz uh, Munoz rather he said this is an upsetting event to all of us here at United I apologize for having to reaccommodate these customers our team is moving with a sense of urgency to work with the authorities and conduct our own detailed review of what happened. 
We are also reaching out to this passenger to talk directly to him and to further address and resolve the situation. So everything here is pretty business speak and okay. Um, you know, uh, to some degree of uh, assurance. So he tries to uh, empathize. He tries to kind of restate this, the scenario without actually reha rehashing it. And then he applies some assurances and some actions. So that's kind of how you do damage control. This is where he fucks up. I apologize for having to reaccommodate these customers. That just comes off so wrong. Because th when I first read that quote, I'm like, wait, you uh, apologize for having to help the customers that you inconvenience? Or you apologize for having to force them out of their comfort zone and having to reaccommodate them? That's kind of a different thing. Oh, he's also the PR rep of the year 2016? Oh boy. Well, uh, yeah, he did not measure his words properly there. So basically, to me, it comes off like he apologized for having to provide better service. Well, I'm sorry. I'm sorry that I have to fix this thing that we broke. Like he's just throwing a fit. Well, man, yeah, I'm sorry. I gotta do this thing because you didn't want to just do it the way I wanted you to, man. That's the way it kind of comes out to me. Maybe I'm reading too into it. So I think that's a big reason uh, people lost the shit. And there's some other stuff that took place, but uh, I don't know. It's just I, I, I guess you could just be appreciative that he's uh, very open about the fact that they don't give a shit about their customers. So that kind of honesty you don't get too often. So you got to at least sc score that as a good thing there but folks I think it's that time I think it's that time um, we don't have any deals for cheap bass so at least I didn't look anything up let me just look up Humble Bundle real quick I know the Xbox One um, sale just ended didn't it or does it end next week it might still be going the spring sale <laughs> what do we have? Save the unicorns book bundle. <laughs> uh, we got the Wild Frontier game bundle. Oh, so this whole is a whole theme. Oh, one of the bundles has Hard West in it. If you pay an average of six. If you beat the average of six seventy three, six dollars and seventy three cents, you get Hard West, God's Will, Ice Lakes, Frontiers, God's Will Be Watching, and Renowned Explorer and Spin Tires. Oh yeah, and uh, Humble Bundle. Uh, Humble Bundle has has re overhauled their site a little bit. They made some little changes that are very welcome like now it shows you the steam review natively and most of these games are either mostly or very positive reviews frontiers has a mixed so if you like kind of like that pioneer vibe that I'm surprised Oregon Trail isn't on here that's like wild wow, frontier right off the bat or uh What's that other one thing called? Insane Wagon Trail something something. You know what I'm talking about. That'd be a good one. The Oregon Trail uh, mock game. <laughs> uh, what else do we have? Oh, we got a mobile bundle. Six dollars more. You get every, uh, the whole shebang. They got Grim Fandango Remastered. Machinery. Machinery. I don't have trouble with that. Machinarium. Her Story. Kathy Rain, I haven't heard of Kathy Rain. Sorcery Four, Burly Men at Sea, Samaras Three, Luminous City. What's this Kathy Rain about? Oh, it's a detective story. Nah, it makes sense. Yeah, if you want some stuff to put on your mobile phone, there you go. So that's it.
that's the show today. I'm Yogi Zilla. You can find me Yogi Zilla everywhere. Um, except for Snapchat, because I don't really use Snapchat. That's just for closer friends. I send you pictures of my of my elbow and my penis. If you're if you're nice to me, not really. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, I'm Yogi Zilla on Twitter, uh, Xbox Live, uh, Tumblr, uh, all the all the shit that I guess really matters. Facebook. Um, you can find you, you can access everywhere: Facebook, Twitter, Tumblr. See you see a pattern here, and of course, geekyanswers.net. That's the main hub. Uh, we got other links there, other resources you can dig into. Uh, of course, our no our regular hosts are usually at uh, on Twitter at Beard and Hat Two, uh, at Warchild Games, and uh, Tuka seems like he's 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 become a regular host. I don't know. At Tuka Forty Four, he's more of a guest host at this point. He can't commit. He has commitment issues. <laughs> Uh, those are the main people you see these days, and of course, don't forget our our pal uh, at Gaming Death, uh, Chris Gannon. Um, and that's it. I'm gonna play some music, and I'm out. See you guys next week, and hopefully, we'll have the next crew, the whole crew next time, next week. Wow, I can't. Yeah, I'm tired. I'm out. Bye. <laughs> Later, people. For real, I'm out. For real, no, for real, for real. Okay. Thank <laughs> you.